Good morning. Thank you all for being here for this incredibly important meeting on southbound firearms trafficking. Coordinating our efforts across to our success in preventing the illegal trafficking of firearms into Mexico. The importance of that coordination is made clear by the leaders we have with us here today. Deputy Attorney General of the United States, Lisa Monaco. Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, John Tien. U.S. Ambassador to Mexico, Ken Salazar. Deputy Homeland Security Advisor, Josh Geltzer. Thank you so much to you and all the other leaders who are here today. You're going to hear from each of these leaders shortly. But first, I want to share a bit about what ATF, my agency, is seeing, and as importantly, more importantly, what ATF is doing to prevent firearms from being illegally trafficked to Mexico and to help our partners in Mexico when firearms are recovered there. Everything we do at ATF begins and ends with public safety. We are deeply committed to supporting all our local, state, tribal, federal, and international law enforcement partners in their efforts to prevent violent crime. Our efforts to fulfill that mission are driven by two priorities. One, getting the actual shooters, the trigger pullers, off the streets, and two, cutting off their unlawful supply of firearms, whether those firearms are obtained through illegal firearms trafficking, through straw purchasing, through theft, or any other method in which firearms are diverted from lawful commerce to unlawful commerce. And those priorities, that strategy does not stop at our borders. They extend to our international partners like Mexico. In Mexico, too often when firearms are diverted to unlawful markets, they're going to arm dangerous drug cartels. They're getting into the hands of extremely violent organizations that seek to use firearms to further other criminal and illicit activities. And ATF sees that many times these cartels are not looking for just any firearm to fuel their criminal enterprises. They're seeking a level of weaponry that outguns Mexican law enforcement authorities. We see machine guns, like the M134 minigun kit, for instance, which is used by the American military and is capable of shooting 2,000 to 4,000 rounds per minute. Weapons like this present an extreme danger when they land in the hands of criminals, a danger not only to the public, but to the law enforcement agents on both sides of this border as well. At ATF, our actions to prevent firearms from ending up in the hands of the cartels and other criminals in Mexico are multifaceted. We provide training and technical assistance to our law enforcement partners, including in Mexico, as well as sharing our technology and our expertise in crime gun intelligence. ATF's Mexico Country Office works closely with Mexican authorities to increase the volume and timeliness of firearms tracing through ATF's E-Trace system. That is, tracing a crime gun back to its first known retail purchase. This capability is incredibly important because so many of the firearms recovered from crimes in Mexico originate in the United States. Between 2017 and 2022, trace submission from Mexico nearly doubled. And of course, we are ambitious in our enforcement efforts as well. Those extend across the entire country of the United States working with our federal prosecutor partners to bring cases from the Pacific Northwest to the Midwest of this country, for example. And that's because firearms headed for the cartels in Mexico do not always originate in a Southwest border state. For instance, last March, an ATF-led investigation resulted in the arrest of two people in Cleveland, Ohio, who attempted to smuggle 90 firearms to drug cartels in Mexico. That is just one example. But of course, 
many attempts to arm cartels do occur in and around the southwest border. That is why we are committed to Operation Southbound. Initiated in 2020, Operation Southbound integrates a whole-of-government approach to enhance coordination among U.S. and Mexican law enforcement agencies in firearms trafficking investigations. Southbound investigations are conducted by nine ATF-led multi-agency firearms trafficking task forces located across the U.S.-Mexican border. With our partners from Homeland Security Investigations, from Customs and Border Protection, from DEA, FBI, state law enforcement, local law enforcement, state prosecutors, U.S. attorneys, and DOJ's criminal division, our task forces are disrupting on firearms that are being trafficked to Mexico. That is our focus. That would not be possible without the kind of interagency whole of government effort you see here before you. At ATF, we are deeply grateful to DOJ, DHS, State Department, at the leadership level for prioritizing this level of partnership amongst the different agencies. Deputy Attorney General Monaco, Deputy Secretary Tien, Ambassador Salazar, and the U.S. attorneys who cover the border, by the way, all six of whom are present for today's meetings, have had an integral part in the program's success. This model works. Between fiscal year 2021 and 2022, ATF firearm seizures with a nexus to Mexico increased by double digits, 17 percent, and ATF trafficking-related investigations increased by triple digits, 217 percent. And by the way, are also up as well. Not only does this initiative keep the guns and ammunition from reaching the cartels, it leads to cases which leads to justice. I want to share just a couple recent examples of investigations conducted by ATF with our partners. Three weeks ago, U.S. Attorney Ubayas, under, under that leadership, and he's with us here today, the District of New Mexico secured a 115-month sentence for a man who was smuggling firearms that Mexican officials believed were destined for the CJNG cartel. And in March, just a couple of months ago of 2023, under the leadership of U.S. Attorney uh, Simonton, and Leah is also here, from the Northern District of Texas, we secured a 10-year sentence for a man who attempted to smuggle a military-grade machine gun to a cartel in Mexico. I see this every single day. Those are just examples. There are countless times, countless cases, resulting from the tremendous investigative and prosecutorial work by ATF and our partners across government, at DOJ, Homeland Security, State Department, local law enforcement departments, U.S. attorneys communities, local prosecutors. There is no question that the challenge ahead of us is immense. That's why we're here. We must do more. But let's not let our efforts, our wins, our successes go unrecognized. Those successes are due to the members of law enforcement who every day risk their lives to stop these brutal cartels from getting guns. Law enforcement officers who run toward the gunfire. On that note, there is no greater champion of those brave folks out there than our next speaker. It is my deep honor to introduce the Deputy Attorney General of the United States of America, the Honorable Lisa Monaco. Thank you so much, Steve. And it's wonderful to be with all of you this afternoon. I especially want to thank the women and men of the ATF and Director Dettelbach for hosting us all here today. Uh, I want to thank all of you, our colleagues in law enforcement, uh, for being here and for your commitment to sh our shared mission of keeping our communities safe. 
I also want to acknowledge, as Steve did, uh, the members of the U.S. attorney community here today, the dedicated U.S. attorneys leading so much of this work. U.S. Attorney Diggs, Hamdani, Rusteno, Simonton, Ubayez, thank you for your work and the work of your teams, the work you are leading across this country to combat firearms trafficking. It is also great to be here with my friends, Deputy Secretary John Tian from the Department of Homeland Security and the Deputy Homeland Security Advisor, Josh Geltzer. And I am very grateful that Ambassador Ken Salazar has taken time out from the Chief of Missions Conference happening um, here uh, in DC today to be here for this important discussion. You know, Ken Salazar is not only a wonderful representative of the president in Mexico, he also is a true partner in this work. He knows what this is about. He's a former attorney general of his wonderful home state of Colorado. So we are really very, very lucky to have him as our uh, partner in these efforts. Now, we all represent different agencies, but we share the same commitment to fighting the epidemic of gun violence that has shattered communities across this country. Disrupting illegal firearms trafficking networks, those that operate within the United States and those that uh, operate across our borders is central to our efforts on both fronts. The size and the scale of the gun and drug trafficking networks that we confront demand a united and comprehensive approach. And that's why we're here today. The ATF is focused on using all of its authorities to prevent the trafficking of illegal firearms in the United States. And as you all know, though, the majority of firearms trafficked into Mexico, including high caliber and assault weapons, are shipped from the United States. And the rise of privately made firearms, or ghost guns, has only made this problem more acute. These weapons empower drug cartels in Mexico to intimidate local communities, challenge state authority, and expand their deadly drug trade back into the United States. And tragically, some of these weapons have been used against Mexican security forces, security forces bravely seeking to capture cartel leaders who are responsible for so much death and destruction, both in Mexico and in the United States. That's why we at the Department of Justice have ramped up our efforts to combat this challenge in four essential ways. First, under Director Dettelbach's leadership, We've increased joint operations with our Mexican law enforcement partners through Operation Southbound, the department's signature initiative to disrupt trafficking of firearms into Mexico. Since its creation, Operation Southbound has deployed nine firearms trafficking task forces to eight cities across and along the southwest border. Focused on trafficking of firearms to Mexico, these teams include partners from Homeland Security Investigations, Customs and Border Protection, and state and local law enforcement, as well as prosecutors across the U.S. Attorney community and the department's criminal division. As a result of these combined efforts, nearly 2,000 firearms were seized from last October to just this past March. That's a more than 65% increase over the same period last year and over 80,000 rounds of ammunition were seized during that same period, also a substantial increase from last year. Today, we are convening uh, representatives from across the law enforcement community, and we've gathered here the ATF leadership and U.S. attorneys that are driving that success. I want to thank you in advance for the sustained commitment, the energy, and the initiative that we will need and we will carry forth to build on in the days ahead. Second, in partnership with the government of Mexico, we've expanded access to the ATF's E-Trace system to enable Mexican law enforcement to quickly track the origin and the purchaser of crime guns. In the last several months, nearly 12,000 traces were submitted to ATF 
by Mexican government agencies, and over a third of those were successfully traced to a purchaser. Third, last year the Department of Justice established a new cartel weapons trafficking group along the southwest border. This is led by U.S. attorneys, and it's already taken concerted action against firearms trafficking networks. And lastly, we're using new criminal authorities established by the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act to identify and hold firearms traffickers accountable. Our agents and prosecutors have now charged over 100 defendants with violations of these new firearms trafficking or straw purchasing provisions. And in some cases, they've charged both. The firearms trafficking provision has proven particularly useful at the southwest border as more than half of all cases charging these new offenses have been brought by border state U.S. attorneys. There are many important investigations that the U.S. attorneys here today will highlight, including a joint ATF and HSI investigation that resulted in the arrest of Michael Bacasegua Barriga, the alleged leader of a prolific transnational firearms trafficking group based in Nogales, Sonora. Barriga was arrested in May in partnership with the Mexican FGR and is being prosecuted by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Arizona. And another example of your collective efforts is the prosecution of Roberto Lugardo Moreno in the Southern District of Texas. This is a case that was made possible by the cooperation with Mexican law enforcement officials. Moreno, who has pleaded guilty, straw purchased an AR-15 in Texas that was transported to Mexico and linked to the notorious kidnapping and brazen murder of U.S. citizens in Matamoros just a few months ago. These are just two examples of the outstanding work that U.S. and Mexican law enforcement are performing every single day to combat cartels, trafficking organizations, and violent crime. But we must do more. Together with our partners across government, including Deputy Secretary Tien and Ambassador Salazar, we're committed to deepening our coordination and enhancing our efforts to protect our communities. So I want to challenge us all who are here today to redouble our efforts in a few different ways. First, we know that data-driven efforts yield better results. To successfully combat firearms trafficking, we need reliable, actionable data that can be shared in real time. To help drive this effort, I've designated a senior prosecutor in my office, Mike Benari, who's here with us today, to lead this process and to identify new opportunities to foster cooperation and data sharing. Second, we've got to maintain the momentum in disrupting southbound firearms trafficking during the summer months. This means pooling our collective resources to continue gaining ground on the cartels and those who arm them. And third, it is absolutely critical that we continue to strengthen our cooperation with our Mexican partners. In conversations that I've had with the highest levels of Mexican law enforcement, I've confirmed that we are aligned on the firearms challenge and the need to do more. Recently, Mexican Attorney General Gertz and his Deputy Attorney General Gallo established a vetted unit to work exclusively on firearms trafficking and to focus on strategic enforcement. By working with this new unit, we hope to increase information sharing and, importantly, access to seized firearms. That information, in turn, will allow us to trace these weapons to their source in the United States and identify the networks that are trafficking them into Mexico. In just a few months, senior officials from Mexico and the United States will gather for the U.S.-Mexico high-level security dialogue. And there we will focus on our shared security interests, including combating firearms trafficking. So as I close, I just want to say thank you again to all of my colleagues who are here today. Through the work by you and your teams, we are showing our resolve in going after violent gun trafficking networks. And I'm confident with your continued leadership, we will pursue and enhance 
and really underscore our vital work to keep our communities safe. Thank you very much. Well, first, I want to thank uh, Deputy Attorney uh, General Lisa Monaco from the Department of Justice. Uh, Lisa is a longtime friend and a great colleague, especially in all of the things that we are doing uh, in partnership uh, with the Governor of Mexico, uh, both on what we're doing around uh, stemming the flow of arms from north to south and also in our work on counter synthetic opioids and counter fentanyl. Thanks to, to uh, the director of, Alco of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Steve Dettelbach, and also to, your, to the deputy director. We really appreciate uh, you hosting us, but much more importantly for your partnership with our organizations in Department of Homeland Security, in particular uh, within Immigration Custom and Enforcement, Homeland Security Investigations, well represented here by our acting deputy director, P.J. Lechleitner, and also with our U.S. Customs and Border Protection. It's a great partnership with the ATF, and we uh, really appreciate it. And I think based on what you just heard from Dag Monaco and what you'll hear from me and others today, that it's that, that kind of partnership we will be able to really make measurable uh, and material gains against the flow of arms from north to south. Finally, I want to thank Ambassador Ken Salazar. I want to thank you for your friendship, for your leadership, and really for making sure that we stay coordinated and aligned with our partners in Mexico to stem the flow of arms from north to south, and as I've noted before, in terms of the great work we're doing in terms of counter synthetic opioids and counter fentanyl. For our partners in Mexico, please know that we in the Department of Homeland Security take seriously the government of Mexico's request for assistance in addressing the southbound flow of arms. We have heard you, and we are taking strong actions against that flow. Just as we in the US and we in the Department of Homeland Security, we take this seriously the protection of our citizens. For us, it's our U.S. citizens, and for you, it's the citizens of the government of Mexico. We know and understand that. We are fully aligned with you, and that's why we at the Department of Homeland Security have been so ready and able to partner with Mexico to prevent firearms from falling into the hands of violent groups. That's why, in 2020, in response to the rising threat of cartel violence in Mexico, two different Department of Homeland Security organizations partnered with ATF. Again, Homeland Security Investigations and U.S. Customs and Border Protection partnered with ATF to create an operation and launch an operation called Operation Without a Trace. Operation Without a Trace. It started in 2020 and it continues today. We have uh, been incredibly successful, but we, as I think as Dagmonico just says, we need to continue to focus on that and as, I, as she noted, to redouble our efforts. Operation Without a Trace targets the illicit purchase, transport, and distribution of firearms, firearm components, and ammunition from the United States to Mexico. Operation Without a Trace utilizes a three-pronged approach. It leverages intelligence, interdiction, and investigative assets to identify, disrupt, and dismantle TCO's trafficking firearms operations. It's effectively a disruption operation. Since 2021, so it started in 2020, since 2021, Operation Without a Trace has also spearheaded a campaign to elicit firearms tracking information from the public through a very effective HSI, Homeland Security Investigations, tip line. HSI and CBP jointly are pushing out messaging for this campaign at our ports of entry, obviously at the southwest border, checkpoints, and private shipping and transportation businesses. Now it's worked, and here are the statistics to demonstrate that. Since Without a Trace's inception, we've achieved significant success preventing trafficking of weapons along the southwest border and into Mexico. The operation has resulted in the initiation of over 900 investigations, over 700 arrests, and over the seizure, and over the seizure of over 1,900 firearms and 850,000 rounds of ammunition, almost a million rounds of ammunition. Now, importantly, our work is continuing. This year, in addition to the steady state operations that we already do at the Southwest border, through HSI, through CBP, 
at the points of entry, we actually started to initiate specialized named operations. They included uh, earlier this year in uh, late February, operations Desert Lightning and Counter Strike to support counter weapons trafficking efforts and target the diversion of illicit activity during ongoing law enforcement search efforts by the TCOs. These and other DHS law enforcement actions have yielded significant results at the Southwest border points of entry, including the seizure of nearly 110,000 gun parts and ammunition and over 600 handguns and long arms and about $9 million in currency in fiscal year 2023. Capitalizing on the success of four Operation Desert Lightning surges so far, just in this fiscal year alone of 2023, we're going to deploy another one and our intent will be to execute Operation Desert Lightning every single month. It will be in a different city, it will be in a different area along the southwest border, and we will get inside the decision cycles of the cartels and of the TCOs who seek to do harm to both of our nations through the use of this illicit, these illicit firearms. I'll just say in close that the Department of Homeland Security in partnership with the Department of Justice with the great teams that are led by Ambassador Salazar uh, down at the country team in Mexico City, that we, the American people, the United States government, DHS and DOJ are in strong partnership with the government of Mexico. And we intend to keep the pressure up on all of this illicit firearms trafficking from north to south. With that, I'll be followed by my good friend, the ambassador. Thank you very much, S2, Deputy Secretary Tim. Let me first say that on behalf of uh, President Biden and the role that he has assigned me to play in Mexico, this is a very high priority issue. He asked the question, why is this such a high priority issue for us? It is a high priority issue because it is at the center of achieving what we need to have, and that's our national security in the United States of America, in North America. We see it in the defense perspective where we have such a relationship with Mexico, the United States, and Canada in ensuring that we have security here in the North American continent. When we look at the issues relating to crime and the violence that we see on both sides of the border, this issue of how we deal with arms trafficking becomes very, very important in the context of national security. I want to acknowledge the leadership and attention that has been given to this issue by the Department of Justice under the leadership of Attorney General Merrick Garland and Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco. They have walked the talk in terms of their presence in Mexico in meetings with the President of Mexico and all the security agencies multiple times. I also want to acknowledge the great work of the Department of Homeland Security and Secretary Mayorkas and Deputy Secretary John Tin, HSI, uh, the Border Patrol, and all the different elements of DHS that are helping us on this fight. And also, particularly want to say thank you to Steve Dettelback and to the ATF. The tools that the ATF has uh, are now being used in a way where in coordination with the whole of government effort that we have underway, we believe that we can make an impact on arms flowing south into Mexico. Perhaps the uh, most important thing about this gathering today here in Washington is that it is the first time in my history of working on these, these issues for a long time where we bring everybody together. Uh, if we're going to be successful, as our Deputy Attorney General just said, we need to have this united, comprehensive approach. Hence, the six United States attorneys who do such a fabulous job and who we are so proud of prioritizing this issue. You know we can make a difference because you already are doing it. Bringing in the interagency, so yes, uh, bringing in the Department of Justice, uh, Homeland Security, other agencies that are involved, such as INL and the State Department, 
but also the leadership of the White House through Liz Sherwood Randall and the Home Homeland Security Advisor who is leading much of this effort along with jo Josh Gelcher who's here today. That's what I call, as Lisa Monaco just said, a united comprehensive approach. This is the first time in the history of this issue that we have this opportunity, hence the historicity of this uh, convening today. I also want to say that we are, this is an issue where Mexico is in the fight. You know, we have been involved, are involved, work with the Mexican government closely. The perception sometimes that perhaps Mexico is not in the fight is wrong. The reality of it is that they are in the fight with us. If you look at what has happened uh, just in terms of 2022, 403 police officers were killed. 403 police officers were killed in Mexico in 2022. Now, they are being killed by weapons, 60 to 70 percent, the majority of them coming from the United States of America and to Mexico. So they are in the fight with us. We monitoring and always with the respect to the sovereignty of Mexico, seeing what happened in operations where we went after one of the most wanted who had uh, been in part or who had led the effort in the murder of uh, one of our DEA agents. Well, in that particular operation, 13 Marines were killed in an accident that happened after the operation was completed. In a more recent operation involving another leader of one of the most significant cartels in Mexico, more than 10 members of the US, of the Mexican Army and the National Guard were also killed. When we make those calls to the Secretary of Defense in Mexico, Luis Crescencio Sandoval, or to the Secretary of the Navy, Rafael Ojeda, we tell them we need to honor, as they are honoring, the lives of their soldiers and sailors, the members of the National Guard who, have, who are dying in this fight. And part of the way we honor their lives is by making sure that we're doing everything we can from a law enforcement point of view. That we're doing everything we can, first of all, to stop the flow of arms that come from the United States across the border into Mexico that are causing very significant violence in many communities in different places in Mexico. We need to make sure that we do everything we can to stop that flow to the south. Secondly, we need to do the right investigations with the right information that only we in the United States, through the resources you have in partnership with the Mexican government, can identify those who are committing these crimes. And because of the communities, the, the Safe Communities Bipartisan Act, which was signed, we have new tools. I say this in Mexico, and we say it here in the United States. If you're involved in arms trafficking, in this day, in 2023, we're going to find you, and you're going to pay for your crime. And the USAs who are here, along with the leadership of the department, the departments who communicated the cases that are already happening, we have already 100 defendants that are being prosecuted under that law. The message should be loud and clear. The firearms traffickers, as well as to the cartels who pay for these weapons, that we are going to go after you and justice will be served. But the only way you do that is by continuing the work that you've done and to build on that work. And finally, I want to say that we're doing this in the context of a framework of a relationship that's built on a partnership with Mexico. We formed the Bicentennial Security Framework, which is attended by Attorney General Garland and Secretary Blinken and Secretary Mayorkas and many others. Now, about a year plus ago, we're leading to a reaffirmation and an accountability on what we have done 
in a meeting that will be a high-level security dialogue that will be held in October. We'll be able to report out on the successes that have happened since we started this effort. But because of this effort that is happening here today in Washington, D.C., at the offices at, a at ATF, we're going to be able to report, in my view, even better results. And lastly, let me just say, I had the honor of being uh, the Attorney General of Colorado for six years before I came to Washington to the Senate. And during that time, we were in the midst of reflecting on homeland security and seeing what had happened in 9-11 and the lessons that we had learned. One of the lessons that came out of 9-11 and the reports that were created by the commission, we took a look at lessons learned from the event of 9-11, is that we needed to work together. We needed to share information. So even though I was a state attorney general, I was not a fed like most of you who are in this room, I remember being a member of the Joint Terrorism Task Forces. And I remember the sharing of information. So we had FBI and ATF and HSI and all the, US, the USAs that were involved in all that, bringing the whole of government effort together. I just want to underscore that as we deal with this security issue that involves cartels that are well known to everybody, that are financed with their ill proceeds more than they ever have been, to be able to purchase the kinds of weapons that they're purchasing, that it calls for that kind of clear action on behalf of the United States government. And because of the direction that we have from the President of the United States, the direction that we have from the cabinet agencies, the direction that you've had from the speakers you've already heard from and you'll hear from Josh in a minute, it's very clear what we got to do. We've done it in the past. We'll do it again. I look forward to having all of Mission Mexico, all of our agencies who are represented there on your behalf, making sure that we have a lasting impact on stemming the flow of arms from the United States into Mexico. Thank you very much. Now, often, uh, you know, January 8th and 9th, 10th, I have to put myself in this context. It was a historic day for us in Mexico. Um, it was a historic day because President Biden came to Mexico and spent three days in very significant meetings that we had with President Lopez Obrador. And I have to remind us all that it had been nine years since the President of the United States had gone to Mexico. And there had not been a dialogue on security until we started this in the last several years. One of the points of the spear that is leading all of this new era in terms of the relationship where we're focusing on these security issues, fentanyl and precursors north, human smuggling and all the mayhem that's caused around that security issue, and fentanyl has been the National Security Council and the Homeland Security Advisor Liz Sherwood Randall, and with her, including a person who is largely responsible for us coming together, is Josh Geltzer. Josh. Uh, I am very grateful to the ambassador for, for those kind remarks and to all who have spoken uh, today, as well as to DOJ and ATF for, for hosting this gathering. After that series of pretty remarkable presentations, I'm, I'm reminded of the adage that it's possible that all that can be said has been said, but not everyone has said it. And I don't want to fall into the trap of, of that, especially on a day when we have real work to do, when this session in which we open up the discussion is just a prelude to rolling up our sleeves and having some more operational conversations. But I do want to just take a moment to emphasize really two things from our perspective at the White House and at the National Security Council. One, what a priority it is to stop firearms trafficking. And two, 
what an effort we have underway to bring together all the parts of our government, as well as our critical partners in Mexico and elsewhere, to tackle this issue comprehensively. So let me say a few words on that. We start from a fundamental premise that you've heard from the other speakers, which is that the majority of firearms trafficked into Mexico come from our country. They come from the United States. Drug traffickers use these weapons, which range from handguns to high caliber and assault weapons, against the Mexican people and against those who are our partners, the military, law enforcement, who try to tackle a whole set of hard issues with us together. What's more, that supply of firearms helps drug traffickers with their enterprises. It helps them move deadly drugs, including fentanyl and other, other synthetic opioids, into our country, where they wreak havoc on American communities, just as they wreak havoc on Mexican communities and communities elsewhere. So tackling this issue is both the right thing to do in and of itself, and it helps support other high priorities of this administration. Now, you've heard from the Justice Department, the Homeland Security Department, about their critical disruptive efforts. Under Operation Southbound, the Justice Department disrupts trafficking of firearms from the U.S. into Mexico through task forces along eight cities across the southwest border. For DHS, it's Operation Without a Trace, with HSI and CPP working with Justice Department colleagues to identify, target, seize, and investigate financing, transportation, and communications methods, among other things used by trafficking networks. What we have tried to do at the White House in particular is add to the tool set, add to the authorities available to our operational colleagues in tackling this, this problem set. I'll give you two examples, one by statute, one by executive order. The President was very proud to sign into law the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which, as you heard from Lisa, the Deputy Attorney General, has given the Justice Department critical tools to go after gun traffickers. That includes making it a federal crime to act as a straw purchaser of firearms intended for unlawful use. That's by statute. Then, by executive order, and in particular, Executive Order 14059, which President Biden signed in December of 2021, the Department of the Treasury, and in particular its Office of Foreign Assets Control, or OFAC, now has the authority and has used the authority to impose sanctions on individuals engaged in the trafficking of high caliber firearms from the United States to Mexico, and in particular to the powerful drug cartels that operate there. There's more work that complements all of this. You've heard about the anti-cartel weapons trafficking group that the Justice Department has established along the border. We're also committed to empowering and working with ATF and others to stop the proliferation of illegal firearms through civil actions, through restraining orders, all the tools in the tool set. And that includes a particular focus on so-called ghost guns, the essentially untraceable, privately made firearms that are proliferating. What's more, we are working as an administration to promote safe storage of firearms, which can prevent the theft of guns that then become part of that southbound flow. We are going to continue to focus on outbound operations and enforcement. That includes empowering those in DHS, including CBP, to conduct outbound enforcement operations that can disrupt the flow of firearms and currency out of the United States. And then I want to emphasize a critical piece to all this, and you heard it from the ambassador who lives this piece and works this piece so effectively every day, which is our collaboration with Mexico. It is, wor is by working with the government of Mexico that DOJ and the State Department have been able to expand that access to E-Trace, as you heard the Deputy Attorney General talk about. It is in collaboration with the Mexican government that DOJ and State has been able to support the accreditation of 25 ballistics laboratories across 19 Mexican states. And, as you heard others indicate, it is a critical initiative underway to be a good partner as Mexico establishes, trains, and sponsors a dedicated investigations vetted unit to increase firearms trafficking investigations and prosecutions. Partnership like this doesn't just happen. It comes because the President of the United States invests time, effort, capital in the hard work of diplomacy. And it happens because the Mexican government hosts high-level visits from cabinet members and others, and has taken the time to come to Washington to continue these conversations on a wide range of issues. This work will continue. It will continue through the country team day to day. It will continue at the cabinet level and the presidential level. And as others have noted, it will continue in particular in October 
when the Mexicans are kind enough to host the next session of the high-level security dialogue in Mexico City. On the agenda there, as it so often is, as it needs to be, is our partnership in combating firearms trafficking. So I want to emphasize the gratitude we have at the White House for the work that happens every day within the uh, Justice Department, including ATF, within the Department of Homeland Security, within the State Department, and with our Mexican partners in tackling this high-priority challenge. I believe this concludes this portion of today's events, and I'm eager for the conversations we're about to have as we dig into details about how we can do even better in thwarting this problem. Thank you all.